Okay. In Second Corinthians, and we'll read from verse eight. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed the broad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food Supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality which causes thanksgiving through us to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints but also is abounding through many thanksgivings to God." While through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. And by their prayer for you who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you. Emphasis on verse 15. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. <clears throat> now, I <clears throat> say all of that simply to say this, that here Paul is summarising his discourse by comparing the believer's act of giving with what God did in giving his son, Jesus Christ. His indescribable gift. God gave his son, and his son, born in a manger, grew up to be a man amongst men, primarily to die on that cross at Calvary. He was buried, and on the third day he rose again. And as a result of his resurrection, as this portion of scripture makes very clear, being a physical uh, reality compared to a spiritual truth that God buried his son and has reaped a harvest of those who put their faith in the resurrected Christ. Is that not true? Because of Jesus' death, burial and resurrection he is reaping a harvest of precious souls and has been doing so since the day of Pentecost and continues and will continue until the day we go home to be with him. And we can be all part and parcel of that ministry as workers together in God's field. One sows, one waters, but it is God who gives the increase. As, a prophet, as the uh, gospel makes very clear, we are unprofitable servants and we are simply doing what is our duty. But there is tremendous reward for faithful service, brothers and sisters, tremendous reward, as though it's not enough that we have new life in Christ and that we possess d divine nature and that we have an in inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, and that will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, and that he gives us crowns, the crown of life, righteousness, rejoicing, the crown of glory and all these crowns which are incorruptible crowns as though that's not enough. He still wants to reward those for faithful service. And I hope and pray that we all hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. As Roman, as Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 says, Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. So keep up the good work, brothers and sisters. Um, keep on your knees, which is the highest place on this earth, before the throne of God, praying for the dear saints in Africa and in India. And 
way you can give, just remember there is a tremendous reward and uh, much, much, much appreciation from those who are living in extreme poverty and persecution. Again, our whole priority, our number one priority for all our existence on this earth as a church is to exalt Jesus Christ, to edify the church and to evangelise the world.